The divorce stats in the U.S. are not good. As of 2019, from figures released by the CDC from data gathered from 44 states, they found that over a 40-year period, 67% of first marriages terminate. This is a number higher than what we're normally told, that 50% of marriages end in divorce. The average age of couples going through their first divorce is 30 years old, and 60% of divorces involved individuals between the ages of 25 and 39, and 66% of the time, it's women initiating divorce. The harsh truth is that your marriage is more likely to fail than succeed. Does this mean that you shouldn't get married? And does this mean that we should scrap marriage altogether? There is a heated cultural debate going on right now about these questions. Pearl Davis, who has become super popular on YouTube for her controversial cultural commentary, recently set her sights on modern marriage, and that caught the attention of Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, and the Daily Wire crew. Their back and forth, though, gives us a clear glimpse into what is going on with modern marriage. I believe that marriage is a bad deal for men in 2023, and I think it is negligent to encourage young men to get married without informing them of the risks. And no, I do not think informing them of the risks is saying, yeah, the laws are bad, but just sign up anyway. So Ben Shapiro responds to me. Um, and I will say I'm getting, they're getting a little bit nicer. You know, um, when I first, I first was, you guys remember personally attacked. I was called an old spinster <laughs> oh, by uh, Matt Walsh's wife. But now, now Pearl's getting, getting some real criticisms. So let's pull up the video. The red pills have taken it one step further. And now they're telling young men, you should not get married. It's too dangerous to get married. Don't get married. That's foolish. That's foolish. So let's, let's go through some of these arguments because they become very popular on the right. So let's start with Pearl Davis. So Pearl Davis is an anti-feminist who has uh, become pretty popular these days. A lot of people label her sort of a female Andrew Tate, although without the uh, checkered past. And uh, here is Pearl Davis talking about marriage. The trad cons, Daily Wire conservatives were are saying that Pearl's just a doom and gloomer who lies about stats, just focuses on the negatives, never the positives, and all the men complaining are just crybabies. And so one day he comes home and he finds out that his wife had called the police on him and told them that the first time they hooked up 10 years ago, he, um, he had quote unquote raped her. And the truth of the matter is when a man has children, they're not his kids. A man has no way to have children and those kids be actually his. They're always hers because the courts give the women custody 90% of the time and rich men are really the only ones that have the money to fight it and the time. So I, I ask the Daily Wire, Jeremy Boeing, Matt Walsh, um, are, is this just crybabies? Are they just, are they just, they're crybaby weak men who don't man up and want to risk that? So, you know, it's interesting because instead of demanding that the laws change and demanding women face repercussions for doing this stuff, you guys demand that men need to step up and take part in a system that discriminates against them. You say, oh, find a girl that prays, she won't do it. But, and I had this thought too, until I found a Muslim girl that did the same thing. I found a Christian girl that did the same thing. I found a Catholic girl. It's happening all over. Whether you want to believe it or not, it is happening. I don't care about your religion. I don't care about your church. This happens everywhere. Okay, so the argument that she's making against it, all these marital policies, those are, those are correct arguments. And nobody is disregarding the pain of men who have been wrongfully victimized under these circumstances where the incentive structure is completely stacked against them. That is true. However, the benefits of marriage are still unbelievable. It does matter who you marry. To pretend that there is no difference between the person that you marry, that it's happening with Christians and Muslims, and, and it's all the same, that's statistically untrue. There are things that you can do to mitigate against the risk of divorce, and the person that you marry is the chief mitigation. But one of the things, throwing out the baby with the bathwater is not the solution. So how about both? How about we revise the system of law? But also, in the meantime, you do need to find a spouse and get married to her. Here's the thing. They're both right. You need to know that marriage has its risks. And there is a chance that it could end up badly, far from the fairy tale that you thought it would be. On the other hand, it could very well be everything that you've ever dreamed of. And it could very well be the fairy tale that you thought it would be. I read recently, I think it was some TikTok thing I saw, but it was uh, an old business guy and he was saying, you know, the real definition of success in life is not money or material things or anything like that. The real definition of success is if you're a father and your kids, when they become adults and therefore can make their own decisions, choose 
to hang out with you because they want to hang out with you. And that's the ultimate definition of success. What do you think of that theory? Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's right. I mean, I would say I feel that acutely. I would say my wife feels that even more acutely. Like, she's so thrilled if her kids want to hang out with her, if they want to do, you know, committed things with her, that she can hardly stand it. And, it, I mean, this is also one of the great advantages of having a family. People just don't understand this. There isn't anything more important that you will have in your life than your kids, mm. period. The hard truth that we all need to accept is that you can't be normal if you want your marriage to succeed. That's the expectation you must have. 65% of businesses fail within 10 years. Does that mean you shouldn't start a business? And we as a society, should we just scrap businesses altogether? It's like, no, we need them in order for society to function properly. Am I going to remain afraid of starting a business because the likelihood of it failing is high and I could end up bankrupt? Like not doing something out of fear of failure is called cowardice. And I refuse to live my life dictated by fear. However, I know that there are also other people that are not necessarily cut out for that type of risk. But in order for your business to succeed, you must be good. You can't be normal. You can't be mediocre. You need to be intentional, competent, self-aware, executing and improving on a daily basis. Evaluate, adjust, pivot, etc. If you take your foot off the pedal, you begin the downfall. The exact same is true for marriage. It's desperately needed by society to protect the nuclear family, which is the bedrock of a healthy society. And it's also needed for the individual who is the right fit for it. Like creative work is needed by the artist, for example. Also, in order for it to succeed, you must be good. You can't be mediocre, you can't be normal, you can't be average. You need to be intentional, competent, self-aware, executing and improving on a daily basis, evaluate, adjust, etc. If you take your foot off the pedal, you begin the downfall, just like a business. And that goes for men and women. Pearl touches on this with something that's super controversial, but I think the point should be carefully considered. Until you start lowering the risk for men, Regardless of what I say, you're going to see less men sign up. We need to increase the value that men get out of marriage and lower the risk. Imagine, imagine, women, <laughs> imagine this. Women automatically get divorced if they get over 150 pounds. Would more men sign up for that? Now I kid, right? This is, this is a joke. But, but you see, that would be a way, women staying in shape for a lifetime would be a way to add value. Um, another way to lower the risk is to get rid of some of the incentives that pay women to leave. I don't believe you will ever see a return to traditionalism until you start changing some of the law. The same is true for men. The point isn't necessarily about the weight. The point is you've stopped trying to be a husband or wife. You've stopped doing the things that lead to a successful marriage. If you are going to commit to marriage, there is no taking your foot off the pedal and it all matters. Even your behavior before marriage matters. Your religious beliefs, your core values, your personality, body count, willingness to confront difficulties and conflict, physical attraction, love language, self-improvement, prayer and spiritual life, clear and defined roles and responsibilities, communication, etc. All of this matters. The man must be committed to virtue and becoming the best version of himself, and the woman must be committed to virtue and becoming the best version of herself, and both committed to improving individually and together. The number one trait of a successful marriage is conflict resolution. Conflict in pursuit of a shared goal or outcome is essential. A husband and wife must continually be sharpened individually and together. Finally, as far as the laws go, I don't give a shit what the state says or incentivizes. The state does not dictate how I live my life or my decision making. Remember this? Did you say free fries when you get vaccinated? Um, I got vaccinated. You're saying I could get this? You delicious fries? Wait a minute. But there's also a, a burger element to this? Let me, let me check with Bill Neithart. Is it too early in the day to eat a burger? No. This could be breakfast? Okay. I want you to look at this and think about, again, 
Some people love hamburgers, some don't. Really want to respect all ways of life. But if this is appealing to you, just think of this when you think of vaccination. Mmm. Vaccination. Mmm. <laughs> Did you fall for that state incentive? Fear of failure, the government, or the dark side of human nature are an ever present part of life. They are eternal forces working against you. Do not allow your one life to be dictated by them. Yes, the risk of marriage, like pursuing your creative work or starting a business, is high. You might be left humiliated, broke, or even broken. But the upside is that you could create the deepest relationships that this life has to offer. And to me, that is worth the risk. I don't want to live a normal life. I don't want to be average. I want to experience the depth of meaning that this life has to offer. And I want to be a full contribution during my time on this earth and be of highest and best use. If that sounds like you, then perhaps you are a person who would do well for marriage and help save our society.